Boa tarde a todos e a todas. Sejam todos bem-vindos, todas bem-vindas ao nosso evento de comemoração de 50 anos do nosso programa de pós-graduação em estudos linguísticos e literários em inglês da Faculdade de Filosofia, Letras e Ciências Humanas da USP. É, eu sou Fabiana, eu sou aluna, eterna aluna do programa e é, sou professora atualmente no Instituto Federal de São Paulo e fui convidada e com muita alegria eu aceitei o convite, o qual eu agradeço muito, para fazer a mediação da, da, dessa conferência muito especial que nós vamos receber hoje, nessa, dentro da nossa comemoração. Eu estou fazendo essa pequena introdução em português, eu vou passar para o inglês, porque a nossa convidada é, é English speaker, e aí eu vou passar sai então para o inglês e vou fazer uma, repetir um pouquinho dessa introdução em inglês e também fazer uma pequena apresentação dela para todos também. So, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for your, uh, for, thanks for being here in our commemoration of the 50th uh, anniversary of our English program at USP. And uh, we are going to continue our commemoration. We just started with a conference with uh, Professor Munira Mutran. And now we are going to listen to Professor Maureen Murphy, who uh, is going to talk a little bit about uh, her experiences here also with our program. And I'm going to give a short introduction of uh, Professor Maureen Murphy. And she was very kind to accept our invitation today, which is uh, Thanksgiving Day for her. So first of all, thanks. Uh, uh, happy Thanksgiving, Professor Maureen, <laughs> now live. <laughs> and um, Uh, professor Maureen Murphy is Professor of Curriculum and Teaching, Director of the Secondary English Programs and Co-Director of the Undergraduate Irish Studies Minor. She has served an interim dean of the School of Education and Health and Human Services 2005 to 2008, the university's dean of students for more than a decade and acting chair of the Department of Curriculum and Teaching. Murphy was the director of the Great Irish Family Curriculum Project for the New York State Department of Education, a past president of the American Conference for Irish Studies and a past chair of the International Association for the Study of Irish Literatures. Murphy has lectured and published widely in Irish literature, folklore, history and American Irish literature and culture. Murphy has written more than 100 articles and book chapters and delivered more than 300 lectures in 18 countries. And while you listen to Professor Maureen, if you have questions to ask her after her conference, we can we have a little time also to discuss uh, some of your questions with her. So thanks, Professor Maureen, for your presence here with us today. And uh, uh, We are very glad to have you here, and uh, you can start your speech. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Fabiana, and bom tarde, my friends. Uh, good to see you all, and I'm going to talk about, well, first to congratulate you on 50 distinguished years of Irish studies in Brazil and indeed in South America. I want to start by asking three questions Why Irish studies? Why now? And why here in Brazil? I think these are some of the answers. There is an increased Irish presence abroad. When I first came to Brazil years ago, you had an honorary consul in Rio de Janeiro. You had an ambassador in Brasilia. But uh, since then, the, they have put in a consular officer in Sao Paulo, which of course they've needed for years. And I think it has to do with Munir and Mutran, because any time a president of Ireland came to visit, they were taken to Uspi, and who was standing there to greet them but Munir and the, your, your chief academic officer. So that was certainly the increased Irish presence in uh, Brazil, and particularly in Sao Paulo, was one of the reasons that uh, um, Irish studies came to Brazil and to South America. Another reason is many people 
who were not part of the Celtic tiger economy, uh, joined uh, the undocumented people in the United States. And a lot of Brazilians went to Ireland of all places. They worked in Gort in a meat packing or a meat uh, factory, a sausage factory, and they brought their own presence. They brought their uh, partners to, uh, to uh, County Galway, and they had a samba school, and they had a samba radio program. So all kinds of things happened. The third reason I would say is the Irish clergy were very committed to the, um, the humanity program uh, and particularly uh, in, among, and I'm, I'm talking not, not just of Brazil, but I'm talking about Argentina and Irish studies in South America, which is really the thing that's happened in the past 25 years. But you had uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Irish clergy presence who were involved during the Argentinian Dirty War. And of course, you had an Irish writer like Colm Tobin writing about, uh, about the Irish in South America. Another thing is that Ireland uh, was the first of the modern nations. Uh, this is what's, what has made Ireland terribly conscious of its place in the world. Um, it was, its territory was ceded by Europeans, and they understand the European influence uh, in South America because they were a, a country that was invaded as, as such. Uh, Ireland and Brazil share a history of colonized people. The Irish had a failed rebellion in 1798, and the Brazilians, of course, had the Inconfidencias in 1789, and a similar strand of tradition about the informers, uh, a similar strand of, of poetry that uh, has been written about that particular time. So they shared that historical moment together. Uh, they are like, um, we started uh, today with Fabiana speaking to you in Portuguese. Um, the Irish uh, was, were uh, as colonized people. They were people who lost their indigenous language. It was suppressed by the colonizers. And Lady Gregory talks about the Great Irish Famine taking people from the west of Ireland to America. But she also talks about the fact that their language, the native language, was lost uh, during this time as well. And uh, there, I would say, if you are uh, aware of this, perhaps you remember that line in Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. It is in the firelighting scene. The uh, English Dean of Studies comes in and he talks about a tundish. And Stephen says, what? You know, this is a perfectly good uh, word that we hear in Drum Convra all the time. And he reflects on it and he says, the language in which he speaks is his before it is mine. How different are the words home, Christ, ale, and master? Think of Christ, for example. In Irish, it would be a slender vowel next to an S has an SH sound. So it would not be Christ, but it would be Christ. And uh, for example, master has a slender R, so it would be master, master. And just like the Irish name Mora, M-A-I-R-E is Mora, Mora. And so he says how different these words are on his lips and mine. He said, I'm not speaking or writing these words without a restlessness of spirit. The language so familiar and so foreign will always be in acquired speech. Yeats said the same thing. He said, national language is Gaelic, but my mother tongue is English. And just so uh, Joyce says here, uh, uh, the language, English, so familiar but so foreign will always be an acquired speech. I have not made or accepted its words. My voice holds them at bay. My soul frets in the shadow of the language. And so uh, the Irish, I think, in, in the loss of language, shared that with the Brazilian people. After all, you're a, a, a continent where the dominant language possibly is Spanish, and you are Portuguese speakers in that as well. Um, and the same way that I'm, I'm just reminded of another way of looking at things, which is later with when Seamus wrote the poem, 
traditions. And he said uh, in that, our guttural muse was bulled long ago by the alliterative tradition, uh, her ovula grows. And he's talking about here the papal bull, which granted Ireland to Henry II. And he says the ovula, when you say that, <laughs> that sound, <laughs> Irish has 18 letters and 44 sounds. So you have sounds that you don't even have in English, like <laughs> say that, <laughs> and you can feel that ovula grow there as well. So Heaney goes on and he says, vestigial forgotten like the coccyx or a Bridget cross, yellow in some out, uh, out house, while custom that most sovereign mistress beds us down in the British Isles. And he goes on and he says, we are our we are proud of our Elizabethan English. Varsity is grassroots with us. We deem or we allow when we suppose, and some cherished archisms are correct Shakespeare, not to speak of the fields concerned of lowlanders shuttling obstinate between Bawn and Mossland. And of course, Heaney's townland was called Moss Bawn. A Bawn is a kind of fortified enclosure. He says in the third section, MacMorris, remember in Shakespeare's Henry V, MacMorris gallivanting around the globe, whinging to courtiers and groundlings uh, who had heard tell of us going very bare. And when Flewellen asks, what is, well, he says, what ish, MacMorris says, what ish, my nation? Remember again, that slender vowel, the I and E, next to an S, has an S-H sound. I used to say to my students, S-E-T, what word is that? Sit, they say. S I T, sit, they say. And then I say S E A N. And they say Sean. I said, wait a minute. That's, you know, you just said sit, set. But next to a slender vowel, an I or an E, an S has an S H sound. So uh, he says that we were growing very bare of learning as wild hairs as anatomy of death. And sensibly, though so much later, the wandering bloom replied, Ireland, I am born here, Ireland. So he, in that poem tradition, talks about an expanded sense of language that embraces everybody, as opposed to Joyce's portrait of an artist who sees uh, language as a distancing factor as well. Um, Ireland has, for example, both of the Irish and the Brazilians have a shared tradition of neutrality. Uh, and the Irish have been very much, of course, involved in the United Nations peacekeeping forces in the Congo and Cyprus and Le Lebanon and Kosovo. Ireland has a preeminent place in the arts. Um, so those, the, those factors as well. Why Irish studies in South America? Again, Ireland's appreciation of the European connection. Um, think about Munira, for example, receiving honorary degrees from the Irish, receiving the President's Award from the Irish, the, the fact that the Yates chair now is settled in the University of Sao Paulo. So uh, those are those, those connections as well. Um, also, the uh, tradition of, of, of uh, of a, a, a demonstrated interest in Irish that read, that led to the uh, development of Irish studies as topics of English in the Irish language. Um, and we have also in addition, and I'm, I'm making connections with the, um, with the Argentinians here, uh, of the, the pedagogy, uh, Mariella, I remember when we went to the University of the Pampas, how, how impressed I was with the students' uh, mastery of English pedagogy. And they have just asked uh, their dean for an Irish studies program at the University of the Pampas. Also, uh, Viviana uh, Keegan uh, is writing about children's literature, which is a very important aspect of uh, Irish uh, literature as well. Now, uh, Irish in Irish, there are texts, translations, bibliographies, critical studies that are available to teach um, 
to use with students. So this is a, a, a tremendous thing. And of course, Irish language studies has been the beneficiary of technology. So it's possible to take Irish courses, to have Irish conversation as well. And finally, of course, you see my name down there. I used a bay as my name. Uh, there are Irish studies organizations. Um, the American Conference for Irish Studies, the International Association for the Study of Irish Literature. Of course, Abe here, uh, primarily Brazilian, but it has extended uh, into Irish studies in South America to uh, Argentina, to Chile as well. So, uh, and, and of course, the uh, Irishes have uh, gone out and they've uh, become uh, involved in the Pacific Rim as well. So, um, in they are having talked about Irish studies programs around the world. Let me come to the Irish studies in Brazil. And while during your, your time of, of difficulty, the military dictatorship in 1977, Munira was still able to write her PhD uh, for the University of Sao Paulo about the uh, Irish writer, Sean O'Foylon. She wrote that, of course, with uh, Zoraj. And uh, that was the first of a number of studies, which includes monographs, MA theses, doctoral theses, postdoctoral theses. And again, Munira provided the model as she did for the first doctoral dissertation. She provided the postdoctoral model in 2001 when she submitted her pioneering work, Irish Social and Political History and Biography in Fiction. And she uh, centered on the work of George Moore and Oscar Wilde and W.B. Yeats. And students in these, uh, these years, these past 50 years, have generally chosen drama and fiction for research subjects. Uh, I think it's important to note that the Irish plays in Brazil, the availability of translations, the visits of playwrights and drama and scholars, again, uh, uh, really uh, through USP, the University of Sao Paulo, but uh, more broad, broadly, uh, as, as, as they've met people in uh, through a bay, uh, the, the Irish Department of Foreign Affairs has sponsored people to come, and particularly the, the opportunity to read and discuss plays together. Uh, and uh, I think one of the things that Munira has done is that she's offered very interesting topics to small groups of students who come down to um, Brazil, up to, uh, to Sao Paulo, from the federal universities and they st they work and, uh, and, st and study together. I think Peter O'Neill's Irish drama in Brazil uh, provides a very useful list of productions and dates and venues and reviews. That would be a good, a good topic would be a study of the uh, reception of Irish drama in Brazil. That would be a very good topic for somebody to do for a doctoral dissertation. The plays of Samuel Beckett, uh, oddly enough, uh, in the Portuguese uh, translations from English and French texts have, have been very, very uh, 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 widespread. And the Irish and uh, the uh, Brazilian production of Waiting for Gado. Um, and in the Abbe Journal, we also had uh, two other Beckett plays, Ve uh, Vem uh, and Ping, which were done by the late poet Araldo de Campo and the late academic Maria Elena Kopschitz. And so um, one of the things that interests me is the fact that even though Beckett has been widely studied uh, by uh, academics that I mentioned, uh, why has the work of that playwright been uh, produced in Brazil not appealed to Irish studies graduate students? Um, that would be a, a question that would answer me. The other playwrights, of course, have, have had uh, a correspond with the uh, USP studies. Uh, Rosalie Haddad's work on Shaw, um, Geraldo Ferri Malima's work on Singh, uh, of course, Munir's work on Oscar Wilde, uh, W.B. Yeats, um, and George Moore. Um, the plays of Brian Friel, um, um, the, uh, the Thomas Joseph Maria Van Dyke, Un Moment Cultural, the plays of Brian Friel, especially, he says, in Permanencia, a Veridade in Brazil, in Brian Friel, Uma Travisa Technica. He argues that, that uh, Friel sacrifices his dramaturgy for politics. 
But I, I'm very interested in the figure of, of um, Domingos Nunez, who has translated and directed productions of Friel's Dancing at Nunesa in San Paulo. And he demonstrates the synergy between Irish dramatic productions in Brazil and the study of Irish drama. And we have, I think, one of the things that's come out of the Brazil program is the number of, of, of different um, uh, playwrights that um, we have we have seen uh, in the work, for example, I mentioned Nunez, but he did the work on Stuart Parker, Sandra Marie Stevenson did intertextuality in Billy Roach, Zoraja Rodriguez uh, did a thesis on uh, Marina Carr, a, a wonderful thesis on Marina Carr, and uh, Brazilians have, have, have been able to see current articles and reviews by Brazilian scholars and their uh, and their um, uh, their colleagues around the world. Uh, Munira and Laura have published Irish Studies in Brazil that marked the 25th anniversary of Irish Studies in Brazil, and they showed their their um, uh, very much an energetic scholarship. Um, there are more. Um, one of the projects that they started was to see multiple translations of Irish texts in the Abbe newsletter. And so they, they've asked for people to respond to particular texts. And for example, Seamus Heaney's poem, The Forge. Um, we've had translators of Irish texts into Portuguese, including Paul Durkin, Ben Kiley, and uh, and it's interesting that even though it began, Irish studies in Brazil began as literature, with Laura's leadership, she's really gotten involved in more cultural studies, and especially diasporic uh, 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 studies. And uh, that move was responsible for a symposium on the Irish in South America, which celebrated the uh, marking of Foxford County Mayo's uh, Admiral William Brown. And it was there was one uh, statue uh, unveiled in Dublin, and a second would go in Buenos Aires. And of course, I'm very interested in the um, non-inheriting sons uh, you know, emigrating from Westmeath and my uh, county Longford, where my own people are from, who settled in the Pampas, uh, particularly and, and, and established that Irish presence in the country. And Edmundo Murray said it's probably. 40 to 45,000 arrived from uh, Ireland into Argentina. Um, Bolfin, we've talked about Bolfin, and we talked about uh, Juan Jose Delaney, Laura Azara, Edmundo Muri have looked at Bolfin and other Irish and Argentinian writers. And uh, what needs to help is uh, what we need to do is to help these scholars who are interested in the Irish in Brazil, looking at immigration records, parish records, uh, Irish newspapers, uh, for example, particularly the Southern Cross. Uh, this is a, a, a primary source for the study of the social history of the Irish in Brazil, and an index is very much needed for that. Now, I see that I'm at three o'clock, so, um, I'm just going to finish up. I talked about Joyce and Borges, uh, and the importance of that, and Borges making his own cultural and personal connections, the influence of Irish and Irish writers on the work of South American writers, uh, three short fictions. Irish writers, in turn, have set their work in South America. Colm Tobin in Argentina, Paul Dirk, and of course, in, in uh, his book, Greetings to my friends in Brazil, and um, and, and there are di different kinds of forms of Irish writing, like the fabulous of uh, James Stevens and Emer O'Duffy and Flann O'Brien, with those of uh, Latin American writers of the magical realism. I mentioned uh, the work of the American anthropologist Nancy Shepard Hughes, who done study of family life in the in, in County Kerry and in Brazil and the degree which she has been uh, unsuccessful in her attempt. She, she says she tries to reconcile her responsibility as an honest ethnographer and her, and her respect and her responsibility to the people who have shared their homes with her and provided her with uh, that, it, it, that uh, it, um, 
tradition. Um, the um, I, I mentioned as well uh, Roger Casement. We've talked about that. Roger has done a lot of work with Casement. And my question, of course, here is how did Casement mediate between his commitment to the cause of Irish nationalism, which led to his execution in 1916, and his life as a British colonial administrator in South America. Has anybody looked at his consular work in the context of British and diplomatic histories of Brazil and Peru? I think that's something that needs to be done. Let me finish by talking about music and social justice in Brazilian and Irish popular music. I think of uh, Catano Veloso's Tropical Truth and um, Bono's uh, music and advocacy for the dispossessed. Um, I think the uh, Bono represents a younger generation of urban rock, Dublin rock musicians who use music to promote global peace and justice. And in the same way that you see um, Veloso trying to use his music for the same way. So here again are the shared values that have informed the concern for social justice among Brazilians and Irish uh, musicians, and you might want to look at the shared uh, elements, the shared values in those traditions. Now, it is after three o'clock. I have to uh, leave you, I must uh, say. Uh, I have enjoyed very much, very, you know, going madly through my notes here with you, but I have to, um, it is Thanksgiving and my job is to cook for my family. So I have to leave you. And I say um, for you, um, abrazos and beijos, sadojes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Maureen. Your conference was uh, really interesting. We learned a lot listening to you and you were very kind to accept to be here in this uh, holiday. <laughs> So I don't want to, to uh, I don't to, uh, uh, I, I mean, I know that you are in a hurry to be there with your family. So I'm just going to thank everybody, sending lots of love, beijos e abraços at the chat on YouTube. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, my, Professor my, Marine. My great friends. Yes, thank you. So Dajes to everyone. And good luck. Just another 50 years. Another 50 years. Well, Lear and I may not be with you, but next generation will. Okay. okay. Thank you, Professor. Goodbye. Goodbye.